Hello and welcome to the Dear Julie Julie DIY channel. I'm Julie. I am the CEO and queen creator at Dear Julie Julie and Dear Julie Julie DIY. I love to make beautiful things for my home using items from the Dollar Tree, the thrift store, things that people give me and things I just have hanging around. Today we're going to be doing some more spring and Easter projects and I have more coming. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when others show up. We're going to start with a fun Easter project using these wooden eggs that I picked up at Dollar General. You see they're supposed to go together like this and make a 3D egg. You'd actually have a small one and a large one. But what I liked about this is you got four of these wooden eggs with the cutouts for two dollars. Now I'm going to use this skewer and I'm going to add it to each of the eggs and I'm going to put it right in that line. It just seemed perfect. Then I'm going to fill in the hole on the other side of the egg and we'll do that for both eggs that have the lines. Next I'm going to change out the papers and get ready to paint the eggs. I'm going to pull out the celery green. This is the chalk paint from Waverly and I love this color. Um, I have a theme going on and this is going to be perfect. So I'm just painting all around and a little bit into those grooves and then around the outside of each of the eggs. We're gonna let those dry. And next we'll be bringing out the napkin. This is what I'm using for inspiration for my Easter decor this year. I have this scrapbook paper with 180 pages and I'm gonna pick out a page for the backing of the eggs. And I choose this pink plaid. So next I'm gonna be tracing around the egg so that the plaid can be the background. So both the small egg and the large egg. And of course, next we'll be cutting both of those out. Our backgrounds are ready, so now we're gonna get ready to Mod Podge these on the back. My sponge is too big, so I'm gonna cut it down so it'll fit inside the jar. And we're gonna go ahead and just put some Mod Podge on one of the sides, whatever we decide is the back of our egg. And then I'm going to put the plaid side down so that it will show through where the little flower cutouts are. I'm using gloss Mod Podge for these projects, but it's because that's what I had. I actually would recommend for home decor that you use matte. We are gonna go ahead and trim down the excess. We're gonna do the same steps and we'll have two eggs. So next I'm gonna bring out my building blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be making a stand. But first, let's go ahead and add the lace. So I have my lace from Dollar Tree. I've added a little bit of glue to the top of the egg. I'm going to bring it down and around and across the back, back up, add a little more glue after we've cut the little, <laughs> the piece of lace and we are decorating the egg to look a little more Victorian to go along with our inspiration napkin. I have this really beautiful trim that I picked up at Hobby Lobby quite a while ago and I'm just I'm gonna be using little pieces of this and I'm gonna make that the tail of the bow just adding it right there with the glue Hot glue is your friend, but be careful. 
So with the tails just hanging down, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make just a regular shoelace bow out of the lace and cut that to fit. And then we'll be gluing that on top. So just stacking all of these things on top. And next we're gonna be adding a variety of flower pieces from Walmart. I have the lavender and that beautiful bush reminds me of like Pittsburgh. So we'll be doing all of those and adding those on and then topping it off with the beautiful rose. So those were boxwood pieces that we added there, also from Walmart. And then these are the little fern pieces that come in that bush. The bright green was the perfect color to go along with the egg. And so now we are ready to add our little stand. I'm going to put one of the blocks up against the egg. I'm going to glue the second block so that it is flat like on the table and has more area to hold the egg up. I absolutely love this. I think they're so beautiful. They look very old-fashioned and Victorian and they scream Easter. And now we're ready for our second project. This time we are taking a picture frame that I had in my stash. I love that it has that basket weave or lattice look to it. I'm going to be using Waverly chalk paint and plaster, uh, green plaid paper, Mod Podge, the napkins. The bunny napkin was a gift. I only have one of those, so I actually I have four bunny images. We're going to start by painting our picture frame with the Waverly chalk paint. It only took one coat. When I was finished, I went ahead and put my paintbrush in a baggie, a Ziploc baggie, and put it in the freezer for later. So um, I'm going to go ahead and trace around the inside part of the frame and cut out my plaid paper. I'm going to Mod Podge it to another, a piece of cardstock so that it is stronger and more substantial. Next, I'm getting my napkin ready to be able to use it as decoupage, taking the back pieces off. I've cut around my rabbit and torn at the bottom, and now I'm tearing around all the flowers on the beautiful Inspiration napkin. I'm going to tear around several sets of the flowers and have them ready to 
put onto my picture and you can see it starting to come to fruition. <laughs> I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. As you can see, I like to tear the flowers. Um, I think it makes them look, it looks better than trying to cut around all the pieces. And I just love the way this is looking. I will just go ahead and continue to tear and piece the pieces together until I get the picture that I am looking for. And now we're ready to Mod Podge. So we're gonna start by putting a generous helping of Mod Podge onto our green plaid paper and adding our bunny. And you want it to go right where you want it to go because napkins are, they're a little fragile. So we're just tapping it on all the way around. There will be some wrinkles and I am, I'm okay with that. So now I'm gently adding more Mod Podge onto the top of our bunny. I love the way this is looking. So next I'm going to be adding some Mod Podge over to the side. Oh, we have a place where the ear was not sticking. So folded it down, added a little more under and there we go. So a little more on top. And so now we're gonna go ahead and add our first flower over there. And we're just gonna be collaging these on top of each other until I get the picture look that I like. And now I'm gonna add Mod Podge onto all of the page before I check the picture frame and see how well it fits inside the picture frame. But I want Mod Podge all the way through, especially since it's glossy. And we are gonna go ahead and add another little flower up there to the top. So now we're gonna check and see how it looks and I decide I want to fill it in more. So that's what I'm going to be doing is filling it in down underneath so that it looks like the bunny is actually in a garden of flowers, not like it's in a wreath. Okay, and now that we covered it and it's dry, we're gonna go ahead and trim up the sides all the way up to the edge of the green plaid paper. We are ready to put it into our frame and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add it into our frame. I This frame did not have glass, so I'm putting it in there without the glass. And I'm okay with that because it is Mod Podge and so it has a nice surface. So there it is and I absolutely love my little spring bunny and the flowers using my decoupage napkin. Well, here we are, project number three actually got lost. I decoupaged a fall sign and to the right there, there was actually some pumpkins and it turned out really, really beautiful and I love it. 
and I love it hanging in the living room. So next I'm going to be decoupaging some candles. There's that inspiration napkin again. Our sponge brush and Mod Podge. We're going to go ahead and take the two plies off of the napkin and get this ready to be able to be used to decoupage to the candle. You want to make sure that you're using a fake candle, artificial candle, LED candle. Do not use a real candle um, because it could actually catch on fire. So I am just going to be using my favorite ripping and tearing technique. And I'm going to go around several of the sets of flowers, the little flower bouquets that are on this napkin. And I'm keeping the straight edge on the bottom. Here I'm measuring my candle and it looks like I need just a little bit more. So I'm going to cut off or rip up one more piece. And now we're going to go ahead and use our Mod Podge on our sponge brush and start by putting a generous amount of the Mod Podge onto the candle. I'm going to line up the bottom of my candle with the bottom of the napkin. It does go down a little bit and then we're going to collage on top of each other all the way around these little bouquets of flowers. And I did, I chose not to cover the whole candle because I really like the look of having the cream colored candle off of the top. So that was my choice. And so again, I'm just going to keep collaging all the way around the candle. Then I'm going to give it a really good final coat all the way around the candle and then trim the bottom edges so that it looks finished. And here they are. I actually made two and I put them inside vases that I had picked up at Dollar Tree and used some wreaths that I had from my stash. I love them. Absolutely beautiful. So next I am going to be using this Ivy Bowl from Dollar Tree. And yep, we are going to be using the Inspiration Napkin Mod Podge, and we're gonna make a beautiful vase. I have been making these for years. I actually have three of these vases that were made over 50 years ago by my aunt, and I love them. So I'm just ripping and tearing out my flowers and I've lined them up around the outside of the vase where I think that those are going to be the main pieces. So we're going to put a generous helping of Mod Podge inside of the vase. And here we go. We're going to add our first piece of napkin. And this is a messy job here. <laughs> so you're going to put your piece of napkin down inside your vase and then tap it up against the wall and then add your Mod Podge on top of it just like we do on the other projects. It's just we're down inside of a vase 
and it's a glass face and we're going to be able to see through it. So I'm putting some more Mod Podge and then going to add another one of the flowers. And so this one I'm going to put on the opposite side. And go ahead and again tap it in and add the Mod Podge to the outside. So there we're letting you see what it's going to look like. And of course the Mod Podge will dry clear and on really speed mode we're going to go through and add a whole bunch of those pieces of the flowers and I do come up all the way to the top of the vase. I add napkin all the way up on that ruffle edge and then down inside. And originally I was going to leave that, you can see there's a clear space and I think it would be really fun to put like a fairy village or something inside there, or a fairy scene. Um, but there is the vase and it's all finished and I absolutely, I love it. Next we're going to be making a garland and so we're going to start with our napkin, take the ply off. I'm going to use Mod Podge in my sponge brush again. These are foam bunnies that I picked up at Dollar General. I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge on my bunny. I'm going to put lay my napkin over it with a set of the flowers on the bunny. I'm using the pink bunny and the white bunny and we're going to get contrasting two different colors of flowers will come out of this and um, but I really think that they turned out really cool so here is our white bunny and you'll see that this one will come out more yellow where the other one will have a darker look to it and again we're going to go ahead and add just the flowers onto the bunny I did three pink bunnies and two white bunnies and I love the way they turned out. So after our bunnies dry, we'll go ahead and trim off the napkin. And then I have some cotton balls that I picked up at Family Dollar. They're not quite round, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll them between my hands and make them round. And I'm gonna add one bunny tail, one cotton bunny tail to each of my bunnies. Next, we're gonna bring out that beautiful trim from Hobby Lobby. And I am going to put glue on the first bunny's ears and just at the top and attach it to the trim. I've taken double the length of a bunny and made lace bow and I'm going to add that onto the trim with a large hydrangea blossom, a small hydrangea blossom, and then some berries from that awesome bush from Walmart. We're also going to bring in some lavender from Walmart and some of those fern pieces like we used earlier in the egg. So we're going to start gluing our little collage down, starting with the bow, then the fern, and then the two hydrangea flowers. And then we're going to put some of those berries in the center of the hydrangea. Go ahead and continue this all the way across. We're going to alternate the pink bunny for the yellow bunny all the way across the garland. And there it is hanging up in the living room and I absolutely love it. I think this is amazing that you can take a dollar bunch of bunnies and make such a beautiful garland.
Don't go yet. We still have more. Next, we're going to take this package of glitter eggs that were in my mom's stuff. And we are going to use our inspiration napkin, our Mod Podge, and our sponge brush. And we are going to decoupage these eggs. And oh my gosh, they turn out amazing. So again, just using the ripping and tearing method. This time we're going to use just pieces of flowers. So not a whole flower bouquet. And we're going to go ahead and put our Mod Podge on our egg. Then add our flower Mod Podge on top and continue to collage all the way around until the egg is covered. Now you want to make sure that you are putting your edges down so you don't end up with an egg that looks like it's just a crinkle mess. When we've collaged the whole egg, we're going to give it a generous helping of Mod Podge to keep it safe. And then it is ready to be put into our beautiful nest. And I just added some Spanish moss to one of those little wreaths in my stash. And I absolutely love how this looks. For our next project, it's really similar. We're going to be using these little eggs that are on sticks. So same idea, we're going to be ripping and tearing our pieces. Again, we can use just the small scraps. We're going to use our Mod Podge and our sponge brush and just add the pieces on to our eggs. It is that simple. After we're all finished, we'll give it a good helping of Mod Podge. We'll let it dry and then it is ready to add to our beautiful flower arrangement. So how pretty is that? These glossy decoupaged eggs in our flower arrangement. And we have one more. We have our adorable little bunny is back with the cling wrap and some muslin. The muslin I had picked up at an estate sale. We're gonna lay out our cling wrap and then lay out our little bunny, adding a paper to the top. Oh, we're gonna cut around our bunny. We're gonna cut the cling wrap. Um, the cling wrap will shrink a little bit so um, you do want to leave a little bit of an edge and so we're going to pull that away and then cut out of the center there between his ears and now we'll add a paper on top and iron so we're going to iron this for a few seconds I have my iron set on cotton with no steam and I'm just going to continue to move it back and forth and you don't want to scorch it but sometimes that's how you know that it's ready. And we're going to go ahead and pull our paper up very carefully and you'll see the edge of the self the cling wrap is around the outside there. We're going to go ahead and cut our bunny free from the 13 yards of muslin and he is going to be ready to be a pillow. We're gonna iron our edges so that we get a more accurate uh, measuring for our pillow. I am actually gonna use a pillow that I already have and I'm gonna cover it and this is a pillow that my mom made using a pillowcase that my grandmother 
head embroidered. So it's very special to me and I like to have it out, but I thought it would be fun to, to go ahead and cover it with the bunny for spring. So I'm just measuring and now I'm going to cut and make sure that the edges are all straight. And I like to measure several times before I cut. So we're just going to go ahead and cut the top and the bottom of the front of the pillow. And you want to just come right to the edge or right about to the edge of the pillow. I want it to have a nice fit. So next we are going to take out the muslin again and we are going to iron the edges so that we get an accurate measurement. And we're going to cut two pieces that we're going to use for the back of this pillow. And because I want it to be a pillow covering, and so I'm going to be using two pieces folded in half, and they will lay over the top of each other with an opening for the pillow to go inside. So I'm going to use the pillow front to measure for the two back pieces. And we're just going to make them the same size as the front. I'm, I've got two pieces back there. And so we're cutting them in half. And I guess we're going to iron again. <laughs> make sure it's, it's straight. Um, looks like we're a little crooked up there on that one. So two and a half is not, two pieces and half is not going to work. So we're going to go ahead and do a fraction. We're going to go like a third and fold up a third. We're going to cut off that piece that's crooked. And same with the bottom piece. Pull it down. Have a third of a fold. And so now we need the bunny to face up and the right sides of these folded pieces need to be facing the bunny. So the fold should be up towards us. And I'm gonna go sew all the way around the pillow. Boy, that was fast. We're gonna cut the strings off. Then we'll cut at an angle right up to the stitch on all four corners. And then we will turn our pillow right side out. And I'm gonna show you once we get it right side out, I'll um, go around the outside of the bunny. I did go ahead and sew the bunny to the fabric. And, you know, just in case. So I sewed around the bunny. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fix those stitches. You see the back? We have those two folded areas. Now we're gonna bring out our pillow and go ahead and stuff it inside the new pillow covering. Remember, I wanted the one side with the line to be on the, the what would show through to the bunny side. And so we're just stuffing all that in there and it fits and look, at that amazing little pocket thing we got going on there and there is our little bunny and I absolutely love her I love the way she looks in this little chair and it amazes me that she was a napkin
And so here's a look at most of the items all together. I'd love to know which one was your favorite. Please tell me in the comments down below. If you like this and would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when I have a new video. Find something to celebrate every day. Don't forget to subscribe. Have an amazing day. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye-bye.